Corey Day goes back to back. The Eikenberry 25 will have a new driver this weekend. We're seeing a very different Jacob Allen, and I wonder if Anthony Macri should stay out on the road and follow high limit. Let's go. It's Wednesday, April 17th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily presented by Kubota Genuine Parts. The 20,000 to win Weldon Sterner Memorial presented by Chuck's Auto Parts Solutions at Lincoln Speedway is this weekend. The 20th anniversary race is scheduled for this Saturday, April 20th. It's packed with giveaways for fans and includes a pre-race fan zone event in the pits where fans can meet their favorite driver. And in addition to the $20,000 winner share, already very nice, drivers in both the 410 and 358 sprint car divisions will be competing for an increased purse that's spread throughout the field along with additional contingency prizes. Make sure there, uh, you're there to see who will add their name to the prestigious list of Weldon Sterner winners that includes Brian Monteith, Lance DeWeese, Greg Hodnett, Kyle Larson, and the most recent winner of the event, Buddy Kofoy. So grab your friends and make sure you're in the stands at Lincoln Speedway on April 20th. If you want more details, head over to lincolnspeedway.com. Big thanks to Lincoln uh, and the folks over there for their support of The Daily Show. The Kubota High Limit Sprint Cars were at Red Dirt Raceway in Oklahoma last night, and after winning High Limit Race at number one just a few days ago at RPM Speedway, it didn't take Corey Day long to get victory number two. He started seventh and just methodically worked his way forward, taking the lead from Tyler Courtney on lap 20. Day's win from seventh was the deepest a winner has come this season with High Limit through seven races, and it ties for the furthest back of any winner on a national sprint car tour. Uh, Brett Marks also won from seventh against the Outlaws at Cotton Bowl back in March. Day's sort of teammate and High Limit Championship leader uh, Tyler Courtney finished second with Brent Marks in third. Headed to Southern Oklahoma and Salina this weekend, Sunshine's Championship lead was extended to 33 points now over Brad Sweet. Day is up to third following those back-to-back -back victories and Marks and Jacob Allen are fourth and fifth. I continue to be surprised by a few guys who have struggled, inclu uh, including Chris Windham. He was really respectable a year ago with the All-Stars, but just one top 10 so far, and he's been involved in a bunch of incidents. Corey Eliason has just two top 10s as well, and I know it's early yet, but the switch to Jim Shuttlesworth at Crew Chief hasn't immediately turned that team around. We'll see if those guys get better with some more time together. Uh, they were 10th at Texas Motor Speedway, but 15th at RPM and 11th last night. And Justin Peck and Zeb Wise continue to just have the absolute uh, worst luck on the planet. These guys get caught up in more stuff that has nothing to do with them. It's pretty wild. And things were definitely not all fun and games last night. We saw several run-ins through the course of the program. That included Kyle Larson and Rico Abreu. We heard but didn't see an initial deal between those two in the feature, but we did see a tight moment on Flow Racing with 10 to go when Larson got to Rico's inside and both slid high on corner exit. Rico looked to have gotten a piece of the turn four wall there as well. The two ended up sixth and seventh after gathering it back in. The other one I wanted to point out was Jacob Allen versus Brent Marks in the fourth heat race. Allen got to third late, but coming to the checkered in that one, Marks made a move for the spot and forced the 1A over the cushion in turn four. Marks made a trip to the dash because of the move, but Allen missed the feature transfer because while he was trying to gather his car up, both Corey Eliason and Cap Henry slipped by him. After the finish, uh, Allen popped Marks in the rear bumper and even made a little swerve at him on the way back to the pits. That's interesting. I don't recall Jacob ever going after somebody like that before. And this all feeds back into something I mentioned the other day about us seeing a very different version of Jacob Allen. He needed a provisional last night to start the main event and then drove from 25th up to 13th. It was just his second finish outside the top 10 with high limit this year. His results against the Outlaws haven't been quite as good, but it sure seems like when he rolls into a high limit race, he's just in a different gear. He's qualifying almost seven positions better and finishing about eight positions better on average in high limit shows versus outlaw races in 2024. Fifth in the standings, and if we get this Jacob Allen all season, it's not outside the realm of possibility that he could contend for a charter. I don't think anyone would have predicted that when he declared full-time with High Limit back in November of 2023. Remember, he didn't run at like basically any of the second half of the sprint car season last year after the Knoxville Nationals. I'm all in, though, on a spicy Jacob Allen with the elbows out and up on the wheel. As for Anthony Macri, he was fifth in the standings following a win at Texas Motor Speedway and a fourth at RPM Speedway. They weren't quite as good last night, ending up 18th in the main event. The 39M had run all of the high limit races up to this point. I was curious about his status with the series. If maybe he and Joe Mooney should start thinking about a full-time high limit run and maybe trying to lock down one of those charters. 
They certainly had the speed to contend every single night. Bossman Brad Sweet confirmed to me yesterday that they could still sign on if they wanted, but Mooney told me it's not happening. He said their plan was to head home after Red Dirt last night to run in Central PA this coming weekend. Williams Grove uh, has the 8,000 to win Tommy Hendershit's Classic on Friday, and then the aforementioned 20,000 win Weldon Sterner Memorial is at Lincoln on Saturday. I figured that was the case, and it's what was on their original schedule to begin with, but hey, you know, sometimes you just got to ask those questions. Well, last night's High Limit race was the final show as well for Kerry Madsen in the Brandon Eikenberry 25 car. You might remember that uh, Madsen was uh, sort of filling in for the 25 team after Lachlan McHugh decided late to not come race in the U.S. this summer. Madsen got nipped in heat race two late by both Jace Park and Ryan Timms and missed the feature transfer last night. He then ended up sixth in the night's B main. Uh, Madsen had some solid runs though, including leading, uh, leading a bunch of laps at RPM Speedway earlier this week before finishing second. The Deuce 5 team shared to Facebook today that they will be at Knoxville this coming weekend for the weekly season opener and that a new driver will be announced soon. There are rumblings. The new driver is one we've seen out lately on the road who already has some other deals lined up this season as well. Matson will shift his focus over to the second Vermeer Motorsports car, which he will run weekly at Knoxville, along with some other Midwest shows. Knoxville has a practice night scheduled for Friday, with then racing uh, for all three sprint car divisions set for Saturday. When the ASCS National Tour season gets going this week in the series, we'll have a new nightly format in place. Announced yesterday, the new format will be very similar to what we used to see with the All-Star Circuit of Champions. Hot lap and qualify against your heat race group. Heats then straight up by time, except fastest qualifier starts fourth. Heat winner and quickest transfer from each heat make the night's dash. The feature will start 22 cars plus provisionals, and we'll have the regular run of prelim features, the C, the B, all that stuff. On top of the new format, the series has been re uh, releasing some expected full-timers as well with that list right now, including Andrew Deal, Seth Bergman, Brandon Anderson, Terry Isom, Jordan Knight, Bradley Fizzard, Zach Blurton, and Hank Davis. We'll see who else decides to sign on and whether we'll get the return of defending champion Jason Martin, plus guys like Matt Covington and Jordan Mallett. The ASCS uh, will be at Super B Speedway in Louisiana this Friday and Saturday night. If you want some other dirt racing content this week, Wing Nation has Devin Borden and Corey Day. Quick Time has Dan Taylor. Dirt Tracks and Ribrex has Trey McGranahan. Hoagie's Garage has Buddy Kofoid and Kerry Madsen. Dune Witch on Dirt has Sparks Paris and Brent Robinson. Turn 2 Terribles has Ashley Capetta. Plum Wild has Eddie Farnes. Uh, Getting Up to Speed has Nick Trenchard. Caution Free has Bradley Ashford. And there are new episodes of The Dirt Reporters, Dirt Track Confessions, and Racing Roundup. To see all of the shows and all of their newest episodes, check out dirttracker.com slash podcasts. Now that's it for The Daily Show today. Make sure to subscribe to our free email newsletter called The Slider. We had a new issue a few days ago from Smith, uh, Spent Smithback about lawnmower racing. And then I've got another new interview coming up from Jordan Willman. You can get subscribed over at dirttracker.com slash The Slider. Hope you guys have a great Wednesday out there. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.